Hey, it's Patrick, and today I'm gonna to show you how to wire your motorcycle. If you have a carbureted motorcycle with ignition, this is going to apply to you, so it doesn't really matter what type of bike it is. Now our wiring, how we're laying it out, is going to be a little bit specific in that it's aimed at anything from a nose cone shovel head all the way up through carbureted twin cam and carbureted sports. Now we are going to be using a specific piece called the M unit from Moto Gadget, and that is going to be our central nervous system. That thing is gonna cover a bunch of bases for us. We don't need any starter relays, blinker units, anything like that, no fuse boxes. It essentially has built-in digital breakers. A ton of functionality with this, we're really not gonna scratch the surface, but what it does do is it really cleans things up and gives for a clean install without a bunch of uh, craziness surrounding it. All you're gonna need is a bunch of wire, an M unit, some wire strippers, and I like to have a soldering iron around, get some clean connections wherever I need them. You don't need a soldering iron to hook things to the M unit, but you may need it if you're tapping into other wires. Now, to get started, we need to clean off a little bit of paint wherever we're gonna mount that M unit. We need it to ground really well to the motorcycle. We'll get to pulling some wire. Okay, our M unit is mounted secure. It's got a nice ground behind it, so we're ready to start running some wire. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the ground wire, it's already on the bike, attach it to the negative side of the battery. And then we're gonna take our wire from our starter and bring it up to the positive side of the battery. I'm gonna leave that one on the end of the battery loose for now though. I've put two of these wires together with a female spade connector that's gonna plug right into our starter. Then I'm gonna route them through the bike over to the M unit. Now it's up to you to route these things as clean as possible or put them in some sort of loom. For now, I'm gonna leave mine exposed so you can see what we're doing. We're gonna slide it over the M unit. And we're gonna plug both of these in. Comes with these little optional wire ends in two different sizes and they match up perfectly with the terminals on the M unit. You wouldn't have to use them, but they're definitely helpful. Okay, now we have our two wires. We're gonna put them in these first two holes on this end and they're marked start. It doesn't matter which hole you put which wire in, just get them in there nice and firm. Next thing I'm gonna do is run a ground wire from our M unit over to the negative side of the battery. You can use either one of the grounds on the end of the M unit. I'm gonna use this one. So next, you're gonna need a 40 amp breaker or a 40 amp fuse setup of some sort. We're using a breaker. And basically what I'm gonna do on the copper side of this, we're going to take a wire, we're gonna run from the copper side to the hot side of the battery. This will end up on our positive terminal on our battery, but I'm not just hotting anything up just yet. On the silver side of this, we're going to attach the power from our voltage regulator, and then we're going to run a wire from that same silver side over to where it says battery on the M unit and hook it up. This terminal down here is marked battery and we will attach it right there. And since we didn't hot this on the other side, this isn't hot yet. We're using our stock key switch here and we're only gonna use two of the three of our terminals. We're gonna use our B terminal. In our case, it's this red wire. And that is gonna go down here to the battery terminal on the M unit. And then we're gonna use our S terminal, which is in our case, the green wire, and that is going to go over here and get plugged into the lock terminal. So we're extending our wires to come down here to the M unit. I'm gonna go ahead and plug the one into the lock that goes to our green, pull it up here, cut it, and solder it.
While we have these here, I'm gonna cover both these wires up, put them in a case so I don't have to uh, do this later. All right, when it comes to ignition, they can all be a little bit different, but you only need to be concerned with one wire. Whatever wire from your ignition it needs a switched 12 volt source. For us, we're using a crank trigger style ignition. You're gonna feed it over to the M unit and we're gonna plug it in on the spot that says ignition, and that's all you need to do. It'll be on the output side, and it's the fourth hole back. You have two auxiliary, one more auxiliary, and then the ignition slot. I mentioned this before, but we're running all of these wires bare so you can see what we're doing. Ideally, you need to put these in some sort of loom. I highly recommend that, either using heat shrink or a piece of looming material. Cover up all these wires. It'll also help keep down that mess of wires and keep everything nice and clean. Also on our headlight here, I'm going to be putting plugs in here. I'm not soldering this because if we ever wanna take this headlight off, I wanna be able to unplug it right here. I know I have a plug inside the bucket, but I wanna be able to take this thing off. So I'm gonna be using plugs. Basically, we're going to run one wire down here to the output side that says light, one wire down to the output side that says high for the high beam, and then we're gonna have a ground. Now, we also need a ground for our high-low switch and for our brake switch. So I'm gonna be tapping into our ground for the headlight. Instead of running three ground wires down here and cluttering this up, we're actually gonna attach all those ground wires and just run one all the way down. If you do wanna put that in a loom, what you need to do, measure your wires out first, get everything laid out, put it in the loom, then put it back on there and hook it up. So we're gonna use this toggle switch as our high-low function for our headlight, which we're gonna mount right on top. So yours probably is gonna be a little bit different than that. We're gonna plug those in. Since part of this is gonna be showing before it gets into the wire loom, I'm gonna go ahead and throw some heat shrink over the top of that to clean it up. So this is what we're using for our brake switch. We don't have our master cylinder mounted, so I'm just gonna leave this hanging out of the handlebar. But I wanna run my wires through my handlebars to help keep that cleaned up. If you're using a stock style switch housing, it's probably going to be a button with two wires coming out. It's the same process. Jumped right out of there for me. Kick ass. So we connected all of our grounds from the front of the bike and ran them as one ground down here. We're just gonna put that with our other ground we already have on the back of the unit. Next, on the output side, we're going to connect one wire to the high beam and one wire to the port marked light. And then on the input side, we're going to take our wire from our brake light switch and run that to brake. And the wire from the high beam, we're gonna run to light on the input side. So the next thing we're working on is the tail light and brake light. And it's actually gonna be very simple. It's going to be 
one wire is what we're gonna run through this fender. Now I'm using a custom dynamics plug that plugs into a custom dynamics tail light, but basically you're gonna have the same three wires on your tail light. We have a ground, which I'm gonna ground to the back of the fender where the tail light base mounts. And then we have our wires for our tail light and our brake light. We're actually going to put those together to our one wire. I'm gonna run our wire inside a piece of casing because it's going on the inside of the fender and we wanna keep it safe. Feed my wire far through here. We're gonna fish our tail light wire across the frame and over to our M unit. Then we're gonna plug it in on the output side to where it says brake. Now we have to wire up our rear brake switch. Two wires, one's going to ground, one is gonna go back to the M unit to the brake terminal on the input. We've already plugged a wire in there for our front brake switch. This one can be right on top of it. You can run your ground all the way back to the M unit and ground it there if you want. For me, I'm just gonna ground it to the frame right here. At this point, we are all done and have a freshly wired motorcycle. Now's the time to go back, make sure all your buttons and lights and switches work. And if for some reason something's not working, that's another great feature about the M unit. You can go back to the M unit and it will light up the circuit where there's a fault. So you can easily diagnose what's wrong. If you have any other questions about any of the products we used in this video, go ahead and click on that info tab on your desktop or mobile device. That's gonna take you to the product detail page. You can read other writers reviews and more specs about the product. If you still have questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team. They would love to talk to you about what works best for you, your motorcycle budget and riding style. I am Patrick, thank you for watching. Go work on those motorcycles.